Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more casts of top pro gamers, legendary players. Down here in the bottom left, we have Jadong, and once again, you know, the, I thought that last game with Jadong against DeWalt was quite good. We, I found one more of Jadong versus DeWalt. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. I think DeWalt actually played like a really good game. He looked super strong, and then Jadong's just like, yeah, no, I'm still Jadong. So <laughs> maybe it'll be that way again. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but guys, hope that you are enjoying these casts of some Pro Gamer replays. We do have all sorts of other uh, like show matches and, and, and you know, team battles and things like that that I'll be casting as well. But decided to dive into uh, some of the latter replays of Top Pros for a little bit. Uh, and, you know, it seems like people really, really like these to see the absolute top level Pro Gamers going at it. And, you know, obviously here... DeWalt is not a top level pro, but I think he's a really exciting player to watch right now, to watch his growth, to see that he can even hang with these top pros. The fact that he's high enough on the ladder that he's going to hit them consistently and get that practice. Like he definitely has a losing record against them all, but like, you know, he's, he's doing the grind and that's what you got to do. Uh, so big congrats to him on that. And thank you so much guys. Uh, while we're kind of waiting for this game to get going, I want to Thank you for, you know, watching Artosis Cast and checking it out and giving some love. I appreciate it. Uh, please do subscribe. Hit that notification button. And, yeah, I, I hope that you are enjoying the cast. I, I just want to keep working on this channel basically forever. Keep that uh, Brood War pro gaming scene alive for English speakers. You know, get to see all these top players. Really, this game is just never going anywhere. So, Thank you guys for, for helping that to happen because it's not, you know, <laughs> people are like, Artosis, thank you for, for casting and keeping alive. It's not, it's certainly not just me. If you guys did not watch, then it would not work out. So uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate everyone that likes Artosis cast. Love to hear about that and everything as well. So, uh, yeah, we see here that this is a hatchery first from Jadong. He goes up in scouts and it's actually a Nexus first. A scoutless Nexus first from DeWalt. So he takes a little bit of a risk. If this was like a nine pool, this could be this could be a serious issue with that drone scout, right? I, I think he would just straight die to that. So he's certainly taken a pretty sizable risk, but it's going to pay off beautifully. And the fact that he gets to also scout Jadong first and see that it is a hatchery first doesn't even have to make his cannon right away. Throws the gateway down. Let's see. Does he make a, a gas? Does he make a Sanga Pylon? It's Sanga Pylon goes down. Like he's being as greedy as he possibly can. He knows the timings of this. Look at that. The gas goes down. Still no Photon Cannon. But he doesn't need it as of yet. Now, one thing to know, Jadong just threw down his third base and it's very close to DeWalt. Now, this base is actually surprisingly hard to attack. Okay. From this, this location. Uh, because the ramp is over here. So... Like, if you attack, you're going way around. You're kind of way out of position for anything else if you attack into this space from here. In fact, oftentimes, it's easier to push all the way down and then attack up this ramp. I know that sounds crazy, but things like those ramp positions are are important. Like, And that's why, for instance, this base is considered to belong with this, this main, right? Like, the four base quadrant, if you look on the minimap, this is the fourth base for it, whereas DeWalt's would be here right so yeah uh we'll see if that if that pays off for jadong if dewalt tries to punish that at all or what we have the seven next core on the way a very fast plus one attack from dewalt here and jadong is getting zergling speed as well as that layer so we'll see what he does with the zergling speed right i don't think it'll be any sort of super aggressive play or anything by the way still no cannon God, it's it's really fun to watch the Protoss players, the, the top Protoss players try to skimp on everything as much as is possible, right? Like this is the latest cannon uh, that you really can get. Like the, the Zerglings are coming up right now. Ah, one gets through. No, no. Okay, he blocks anything else. So it's only going to be one. It's not the end of the world, but it is a Jadong Zergling with Zergling speed on the way. So it can still cause some problems. So he turns to attack it. And it's almost got a probe. Ah! He is going to see the timing of the Stargate, of the Citadel. These are useful for Jadong. Uh, and looks like he has about 10 Zerglings out on the map. So maybe he's made about one group of Zerglings so far. Spire is coming up. And I think right now he's hunting for this probe. 
See, he's kind of combing the area. He knows the probe went in this general direction. Looks like DeWalt pulls it back far enough that it will stay alive for now. I don't know if we're going to see this utilized more or not. Uh, DeWalt, in the meantime, sends three Zoths down. And look, he does. He walks down this area, then up the ramp. <laughs> I told you. I told you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, going to go in and see if he can harass here. But, you know, 10 speedlings plus these drones. Let's see if he can get a full engage. Ooh, a perfect surround there by Jadong. Doing a, just a great job. Going to be able to kill these off pretty quickly. And yeah, it looks like DeWalt will pull back to the best position that he can find here to be as cost efficient as he can. And he kills about half the Zerglings, deals a lot of damage to the ones that remain alive as well. So, I mean, that's about as good as he could have done. Uh, Jadong, in the meantime, getting a macro hatch. Uh, doesn't have a second gas or anything, but continuing to macro up. Corsair flying across the map. There are Scourge on the way. So, DeWalt's going to have to be very careful not to lose this. I wonder if he's making Scourge here. No, just drones, just drones. Because sometimes you can make Scourge at a different hatchery to catch the Corsair on its way out uh, when it's trying to when it's trying to run away. Now, these Scourge are going to pop. We'll see if he gets away. Oh, no. What? Oh, it was a rally point there from Jadong, but he will end up catching it with another set of Scourge that were made from this hatchery for that kind of flanking maneuver I talked about before. Now, a lot of speedlings running down the map uh, from Jadong. He's bringing a lot of his overlords back, right? So these overlords have kind of been around the map scouting, and it looks like he wants them back towards his base, maybe try to uh, centralize them so that he can defend them easily against the Corsairs. The Scourge going up to scout a little bit. What are they going to find? Not a lot. I think they, I kind of missed exactly when they flew in, but generally they fly in and check like Templar archives, second, second Stargate, that type of thing. Uh, Jadong should be feeling pretty good about his position. And when you kill that first Corsair, Protoss does ask themselves that, like, hmm, is he going to go Mutas? Like, is he is he going to make that commitment now? Uh, reducing the Corsair count by even one can be pretty darn strong. Now, the Scourge going up to scout again. One thing to mention about Scourge, they have a tiny vision radius. They have, like, the smallest vision radius of any unit. So you actually have to get pretty close to things to scout. <laughs> just, to, just to mention. So when they fly in there, it's like, maybe if they're here, they'll see the Templar Archives, right? So you do have to, you have to do a pretty good flyover. That's why you see them hit by cannons sometimes. All right, so... Uh, the Zods come out, and they do have plus one and speed. So the Zergling's going to have a bit of a hard time. Some Hydras have been hatching. We're going up to six hatch Hydra without the Mutalisks this time. Overlord speed on the way as well. The Zergling's not going to fare well against these Zods. He's trying to not engage, but he's trying to slow them down a little bit. Now, the Zods can kill small amounts of Hydras like this pretty easily. They get around them <coughs> and, in fact, run through. Seems like not the best engage here from DeWalt. Maybe he had an idea to run up in the main base, but that will get shut down pretty quickly. Looks like right now a DT entering into this base. Ugh, five, six drone kills. Very good Dark Templar from DeWalt, but Jadong sees it relatively quickly and will eliminate it. Luckily had an Overlord there as well. So a lot of Hydras coming out. He does have that plus one range attack. The Overlord speed almost done so that he can deal with those Dark Templars a bit better. And look at this, the Corsairs finding another weak point flying in here. Jadong trying to gun them down with a few Hydras popping out. <coughs> but it looks like he might actually have an attack coming up. Oh my God, that's a huge storm. That's a huge storm right there. And beautifully placed cannons. Jadong tried to push in and get damage before those back cannons warped in. But it feels right now like, actually, I think DeWalt's winning this game for sure. Right? He got the good drone counts. Uh, his Corsair fleet is still pretty much together. He's knocked out a good amount of overlords. He got a great storm off there. Uh, you know, Jadong's initial attack really didn't do anything. He kind of blundered a lot of those Hydras. And yeah, this is... I don't think Jadong's dead, not by any means. Like, this game still has a lot of play in it for both sides, but yeah, it feels like DeWalt has opened very well, and Jadong doesn't have, like, a lot of things he can do right now. In fact, his his range uh, increase for Hydralis just started. He's about to have his plus one uh, for Hydras as well, which is nice, but DeWalt is adding additional gateways, so he's getting up to five, six, seven, eight. So that is the full number that you can support on two bases if you're macroing well, getting his robotics as well for those very important observers. I don't think we'll see a shuttle early on in this game. Doesn't seem like good positions for that with this base being taken. 
Uh, but yeah, looks like another little run-in is going to be attempted here. He has plenty of Hydra, so he actually waits for the Zealots to get pretty close uh, to, to launch those attacks. But a good storm there by DeWalt. Gets four Hydras for, for his storm. So going to pull back. He is getting that range upgrade. What is Jadong really up to here? We don't see the next level of his attack. All right. Is it going to be pure Hydras off six hatch? That's what it looks like right now. Uh, we'll see if he starts a the Lurker upgrade right away. Doesn't start it right away. Just tons and tons. Of okay, there it is. There it is. So he is going to go into Lurker Hydra. That generally is the case, by the way, just to throw it out there. Like, you can sometimes go completely all in on Hydras, but, uh, you know, generally Lurker is going to be what you want to do the next the next moment. Uh, and if he can do something like a forward containment with Lurker Hydra here, that's going to be something that's almost impossible to break out of. But it is possible. He just kind of like turtles this space a little bit, takes this space, and turtles here, right? So if you have like good solid defense here so they don't want to run up the ramp, and then you have this area defended, it's Protoss can't really attack you, right? Because this is kind of its own little island. And then like they can kind of attack down here, but you can flank from the high ground, which is really, really strong. So anyways, right now, Hydra is going across the map here. Uh, for Jadong. It is a pretty good army for Dewalt. He has a lot of Psy Storms in here. Throws one down. Doesn't really get good value with that one. Wants to be careful with these Corsairs. You know, Mutas still can be added back in. You got to be careful about that. Want to keep those Corsairs alive. And Jadong just going to pull back with his Hydras for now. He does have that plus two attack on the way. We already have one one for Dewalt with a plus two armor as well as a Kadaran amulet so that the uh, High Templars will pop out with more energy and be able to hold three Storms instead of two at max mana. Uh, but yeah, that's, you know, everything kind of going forward in its very normal way. Now, Dewalt is getting down a pylon. He's going to want to put some photon cannons here and a nexus. And if he can hold this area, this is a great frontal defense because similarly to what I was talking about from Jadong, if you have your army up here and this is well defended, Jadong can't attack up easily. He can go through this area, but then you have the flank coming down from the high ground, which is something that will just devastate your army. So, you know, this is a funny thing about Polypoid is... You get these positions that are incredibly hard to break from both sides. This high ground is just such, it's such a great defensive spot. And even though there is low ground next to it that could be utilized being pushed against the wall, you don't have much room for micro. You don't have much room for maneuvering. Now, some Scourge still flying around. Looks like uh, the Hydra is going to actually catch some Zalt Dragoon. You have to run out of here as DeWalt. Without the storm backup, these Hydras will absolutely decimate. Uh, you know, Jadong, I think, is just kind of zoning right now. He moves up to this area. He's kind of checking the front as well with a very small group. But he wants to make sure this base doesn't get taken too easily. He's forcing DeWalt to kind of play defensively all over the place. Because that is the next thing DeWalt needs to do here. You know, he's taken this base. But as these minerals start flowing in, you want to take this base. In fact, you see the probe already going up. Because you need this third gas. Incredibly important for the matchup. Now, I want to bring something to your attention. See him sitting the Corsairs here? They're not that useful right now. So he sits them on the path to his main base. Look at what Jadong is upgrading. That's Overlord drops. So Jadong is planning on trying to drop. DeWalt already kind of heading that off. A lot of really great to and fro from these guys right now. But similar supplies, which makes this a bit harder for DeWalt. It does seem like Jadong is maybe starting to pull ahead a little bit here. <coughs> excuse me, but I think that this is going to heavily come down to what he does with his drops. Notice how many overlords he's sending over. He's filling them up. He wants to get a massive drop off. If you get a big drop off on your opponent, like you can kill Protoss buildings so quickly. They do not stand up well, but the Corsairs are awaiting. Now, four Corsairs, I don't think will kill everything, but they do have plus one. It is a little bit scary and they do push him back. So this is an incredibly important moment. In the same time, we have uh, Hydras going up the map here from Jadong. Going for an attack. There are some storms in here. Ooh, this is scary for Jadong. Everything's kind of being shut down that he's trying right now. Those very hurt overlords getting out of here. Uh, we'll see if he just dumps everything out. I think he already did dump a good ch chunk here. And this is going to stay very well defended. Jadong pulls back completely. Okay, so that was, that was really important, by the way. Uh, drops from Zerg are a little bit of an investment. So if you catch the first one, it makes everything else weaker from Zerg, like all the other drops, right? So you know that that's what he's doing. You know that that's what he's thinking. Now look, right? 
the Corsair as well. Maybe he'll end up losing some of these Corsairs, but they did their job. He's throwing down cannons. He has some additional units in here. He might even put a High Templar in here at some point if he thinks drops are going to continue to come. And that makes it so that it's like, well, you're not going to... I mean, you'll still see Jadong drop maybe as the game goes longer, but it's really that first drop that gives you that huge tempo swing that allows you uh, to kind of break that game open at that point. Now, Jadong has an unbelievable defensive presence, just about maxed out, in fact, ahead of DeWalt, which is very painful. DeWalt looks like he wants to attack up, but attacking uphill into Lurkers is is tough, and I think you're going to see that reflected here. Some good size storms. It's not a ton of Lurkers, only three Lurkers at the front. The Hydra's on the high ground doing a good job against those low ground Dragoons, missing a lot of shots. Throws down an additional storm. Zealot's running up here as well, and, well, I... I don't know. Jadong is, he's running out of units. He is, well, I said that and then I see over here, but all of his uh, normal units on the high ground there, his original units rather, uh, do get cleaned up. The Psy Storms are absolutely unbelievable, dealing so much damage to Jadong's army, continues to run down and the storms just are devastating. But Jadong comes in with a gigantic surround here. More storms go down, a ton of lurkers fall. And Jadong does hold it off. I feel like you couldn't have had a better engagement as DeWalt, but Jadong still crushes through with unbelievable macro. You know, eating endless storms there, but still having enough units. Now, six o'clock, we have a, a new hatchery going up there from Jadong. He did save it. Like, I think I saw a few units trying to run down there, but he blocks that as well. DeWalt does have his fourth base up. So maybe there's still some potential here for him. He does have a fair amount of photon cannons, and the hive is just now finishing. So it's not like Dark Swarm and Plague are going to come up and just end the game. The cannons are still going to be of some value. But right now, it's all about DeWalt replacing these very hard to replace units like the High Templars. You can see he had already made some, and some of them do have really strong energy banks. He's pulled all the units out of his main base because he lost so many units in that battle. So this actually, after something like that, Sometimes you can predict that, like, okay, his defenses in his main should be lacking because he, he needs to bring his entire army together. So this could be a good time for Jadong to do a drop. We I don't know if he's going to end up doing that. It seems more like Jadong right now wants to set up a second defensive position to take these bases in the bottom right. DeWalt moving down into a similar position as that before. Far less defense on the high ground, by the way. If he can get up to the high ground, that's going to be pretty big. Want to mention as well, Jadong switching over into heavy Zerglings here. They don't have good upgrades as of yet. He is upgrading them, but Adrenal is not quite done. Plus one melee is not quite done. So the two armor, the three armor on DeWalt's units are going to do fantastically against these Zerglings. DeWalt trying to push up only a single, or no, two Lurkers remain here actually. Doesn't even waste Storms on that yet. Throws it down on the Zerglings and Hydras. DeWalt trying so hard to break up here, but he does not have an Observer. So he is taking a lot of damage. Finally storms that down. And I think DeWalt will pull back. Oh God, but maybe too late. Jadong with another massive surround here. Look at this. Oh my God, the Zerg Swarm here from Jadong doing fantastically. And DeWalt has to run all the way back, losing a huge amount of supply here once again. Losing a lot of High Templars, has no storms left except for the ones coming down from the new High Templars. And now Jadong just attack moving everything storms coming out trying to defend the photon cannons doing their best to staunch the flow of zerg units but i think Tawalt might not have enough i think he's going to lose this mineral base and if you lose this mineral base the game is basically done jadong out macroing dewalt and winning once again gg